Welcome to Talking Society with ZT, Hose, and Jose. Let's get started. Uh, so yeah, welcome everybody. So we're here, Talking Society, where we talk about different topics. Um, and here we have... Hose. And oh, no, so I thought you were going to introduce us like last week. It was nice, huh? When we didn't have to say our names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like our names, guys. I'm you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Jose. Okay, thank I thought you. I said Jose, didn't I? I think you did, yeah. Uh, somebody's not a good listener. Uh, well, we're a talking society, not a listening society. You know? Yeah, please. <laughs> we'll like, please do it. We <laughs> yeah. We're not going to listen to you guys. Come on. Wow. Um, and yeah, name's Italy, so I'll be hosting, as always, yep. um, with some random questions to you, both of them. And then um, I want actually to know if y'all can share some Maybe one fun fact that y'all don't know from each other, because I know you all know each other for a good while. Yeah, we know each other very well. Yeah. This is yeah. going to be difficult. Yeah, so one fun fact that you don't know. Maybe you can tell us a fun fact about you so we have an idea of what a fun fact is. Yeah. We don't think we're very fun. <laughs> yeah, we just, we just do a bunch of nonsense. Um, so yeah, do you have a fun do fact I? to share just to give us an idea of what we could maybe share? Yes, that you don't. Yeah, y'all don't know about me? So, uh, I know how to count in Korean up to 10. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Demonstrate. That's so many people are loud everywhere in Korea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hana, dul, se, ne, tase, yase, igo, yoro, aho, yo. That's if I said them wrong, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> Shame for me. Yeah. <laughs> so it was hana, mura, du mura dulce. <laughs> Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. She said oh, okay, y'all had enough time. Yeah. Y'all had enough time to think oh, about man. it. Oh man. Um let's see. I mean I'm I'm trying to think of like maybe school era of like a story maybe I haven't shared or just like mm -hmm. something. I, I maybe I've shared I've shared this with you. I haven't other than like right now in my life, I've never had like an actual art class. That's pretty crazy. It's so, like mm -hmm. in school there were art classes. I took calligraphy. Which is a form, is an art form, don't get me wrong, but that's not drawing, that's not painting, it was strictly just learning how to do letters and stuff like that in different fonts. That's the only art class I took, but like as far as drawing, painting, uh, color, like any, mm -hmm. that art style, I've never taken anything until literally this, uh, as an adult, 33 years old. That, that'll that be my fun fact. What about, oh, I don't know, maybe one that I can think how I, I always took social dance classes. I always took social I didn't dance. Know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. Okay. <laughs> I you, still can't could, dance. Could you demonstrate? I'm, I'm insecure. Okay. <laughs> That's always took social dance. Uh -huh. And I was always really good at it, but I don't know how to dance. Like if somebody shows me the steps, like, oh, we're going to choreograph this whole dance mm -hmm. and like cool lids and stuff like that, like I'm all about it. And I love it, but I just, I don't. They really called it social dance. So it wasn't like ballroom. Mm -hmm. No, because you did a little bit of everything. You would do like the swing. Mm. You would do like the tango. Okay. You would do like different. Mm. What was your favorite? I like the swing because you could do cool lifts. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was like fun. Like I'm surprised now as an adult. Like I can't believe that you trusted teenagers picking up other teenage girls and just like tossing them like in the air and just swaying them. Like dude, that was like such a like risk. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would want my daughter getting it's, it's because they yeah. recover quickly. They're teenagers, you know, <laughs> yeah. like so. <laughs> So yeah, maybe that's okay. So that's one you didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know that one. Hmm, okay. So, yeah. Did you know the art thing? I feel like I have no. talked about Okay. No, yeah. I thought that was crazy. I thought you at least like took drawing or something. Never. Yeah. That's pretty crazy because I always took... I guess I never took a drawing class either. I just took like sculpture for the most part. I wanted to take the pottery class, but I ended up uh, never taking it. I wish I would have, but... What about you? you Is there a time. class that you wish that you would have taken when you were younger? Actually, pottery too. Huh? Yeah, yeah, in middle school they they had some, and I just I prefer to take photography. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that would have been a fun one, I think. But I don't know if you're just limited in high school because you're not able to. I mean, I guess if you have your own car, you can go like to different sites to take mm -hmm. pictures. But I think pho uh, photography would be funner as an adult since you have a bit more freedom with your money, ideally. Mm -hmm. Um, and also maybe bef like when we were younger the technology is also outdated by now yeah yeah that's true mm -hmm. yeah i think now it's like the young kids like how much better are the pictures gonna get you know mm -hmm. yeah so i feel like if you learn it now it'd be like probably so much more fun to learn mm -hmm. photography now you know yeah but yeah, yeah. I mean, that's okay i might watch i should probably oh i just thought about doing jewelry too 
Oh, really? In, in so the college that I work at, they have a class for jewelry. And so I think I probably want to go do that. Because uh, I, I oh, go I'm to Michael's. I have to make, you have, make a piece for me or something. Because that's yeah. cool. I, I almost took a jewelry it. class before COVID. Really? Hmm. There's like a our place, but yeah, I thought that would have been cool to do like mm-hmm. a like a ring or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah, because I go to Michaels and I see all the jewelry stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, imagine what I could do with this. But then well, I don't know how to know <laughs> how to like put things together, like so, welding a little it, bit uh-huh. of that soldering. Because mm-hmm. yeah. that's hard. Uh, I told the host mm-hmm. like I was one of my headphones broke, and I was like, I bought a little soldering kit, and I watch I watch so many YouTube's on so many videos on YouTube. Mm-hmm. For, prepping for this right <laughs> and i get ready to actually with my soldering kit i'm so excited i get my stuff and i'm just like like i swear you need at least like three people for what i was saying it's like it can't be this but it was so hard you know mm-hmm. like they melted so easy and stuff like that mm-hmm. on the videos and i'm like sitting there and just like <laughs> yeah i couldn't fix my stuff <laughs> long story mm-hmm. short but i have a soldering kit okay, awesome well jewelry's that would be pretty cool yeah yeah, I seen. I have a friend who does it, um, and she she does like the process, and it's a pretty long process. But she uses the stones, the gemstones okay. too, and it looks really nice. Oh, the mm-hmm. one she puts the stones on the. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're so cool. Maybe mm-hmm. we should all take one then. Yeah, so I would love to make cool. my own jewelry. That'd be cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Yeah, I would be down to take a, a jewelry class. I've been wanting to kind of take a a class like mm-hmm. that, either like a, an art class like that or video. A video you know? class. Mm-hmm people learn how to take videos and edit and stuff like that mm-hmm. and just to do it for fun because i feel like so many people that do videos are like oh well now you're gonna charge me f- you know i'm um, a thousand dollars an hour i'm like mm-hmm. like if i if i had a friend that's like hey would you shoot my wedding like why wouldn't i just do it for free mm-hmm. takes a lot of time huh it takes a lot of time yeah but it, <laughs> yeah. but you would be there at the wedding anyways which would but take you wouldn't a lot be able to dance or like eat yeah i I think you still could a little bit you're still enjoying it nobody bugs you right you can say hey get me this i'm doing you know Mm, you're such a good friend you can make someone look bad in the editing you know (laughs) like you cut it up you know someone you don't like you're okay i'm gonna edit it this to make you look bad and then you know latinos are like i made ice video you know like oh you do the the side effect your feet more. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't call, I film. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I think that would be fun. Cool. Well, thank you both for sharing. I, yeah. I was interested to know if there was something you both didn't know about each other. Yeah, there's very few things, I guess, but just because we've known each other for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so today's topic, we'll start first by um, kind of hearing more how y- y'all story was coming to Utah, because I think both of you originally are not from Utah. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. So kind of your story of like coming to Utah and maybe something that you have liked about living here. Okay. Oh, man. You want to go first, us? Yeah, mine's a shorter story because I've been here since I was very, very young, but... I don't even remember Florida that much, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think in early childhood, you just wouldn't remember. But I do have... It would happen in nightmares. It's funny that you guys were talking about nightmares before we started recording. But So we lived in Miami during Hurricane Andrew, which at Mm -hmm. that time was like the biggest hurricane that ever hit like the the area. And it's funny because I remember having like this dream, even as a kid, this recurring dream every once in a while. And it would be just a bunch of trees that were on the street and like the sidewalks, and, like the power poles were down and mm-hmm. that I would walk through like, and there'd be this cage and there were a bunch of monkeys. And I remember my dad telling me a story about when they went to the zoo after the hurricane, like oh, a few weeks afterwards that they wanted people to like go to mm-hmm. raise more money. Right. Obviously. And so he was just telling a story. So that actually happened. Mm-hmm. Then I had a dream about, uh, in the same dream, it was like the condo that we lived in and mm-hmm. we lived on the second floor. Um, but this is like very, very small snippets. And then I remembered driving very, very small bits of driving here to Utah. Cause I would sleep a lot in the car cause I'd get so bored. Um, mm-hmm. and then like the, I remember the van, it was like, I can't remember the, I think it was a cry or a Plymouth. And that's the one that had like the wood side oh, paneling on okay. it. Okay. Right yeah, in the middle. Right. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure it was a Plymouth. It's a boxy one, right? Yeah. It's like a boxier one. And it was like a silver gray and it had the wood panel on the side. And I remember that it would overheat and it broke down. So, like, my parents had to pull over to the side of the road. Mm-hmm. And and this was, I think, Colorado. I didn't know we were in Colorado at the time, but that's where we were at. It's like just that. And I guess most of my memories come from finally when we were here. And maybe it was just the culture shock. 
of now I have to learn English because in Miami everyone spoke Spanish. Mm. Um, so hearing English and trying to adjust, especially in elementary school, was tough. It's like one book that I always remembered that stuck out. It's because it's the book I read the most because I didn't know how to pronounce the word fire engine because it was like a red the red truck fire engine or I think it's called the red fire engine. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like such a weird, hazy memories, but I just remember like little small bits and pieces that would stick out. And then I remember in, in school, they had this little slide and you know, like the, we would, they wouldn't allow us to slide feet down. You'd have to sit down. They'd put you in timeout, but I didn't speak English very well. So I didn't know that they were wanting me to <laughs> stop. So mm-hmm. I, I did like five times before the. The teacher came and actually stopped me and sat me out for like 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then I realized I couldn't do it. So I would just wait for the teacher to turn around and then I'd do it and then just keep doing it. But yeah, that's like the small memory. I, like it's, I know it's very short, but a lot of my memories of out in Florida, it's like, no, it's like. How old were you back? Like, mm-hmm. what was home? Five. Um, what was your thought about the snow? Do you remember? I liked the snow. Do you like the snow? Yeah, I always enjoyed it. It was fun. Uh, making snow angels was really cool for the first time. Like mm-hmm. you just, cause you would see that in movies and cartoons, right? Mm-hmm. You'd lay back in the snow and do it. And then I remember when they would, uh, whitewash kids, you know, and not the brain stuff, okay, where you would push them in their face in the snow. Have mm-hmm. you done that before? Or have you ever seen anyone? No, they call it whitewashing. It's just like when I guess either a bully thing or like your friends, you would just do it to like mess around with each other. Mm-hmm but no one did it to me i just like put my face like this is freezing like so i, I never wanted to be, wanted to do that it? again yeah <laughs> snowball fights were always super fun and i remember not being as cold as a kid i don't know if you guys experienced the same yeah like no, as no, adult, no. now yeah. in the winter it's a chore like i have to mentally prep myself for the cold mm-hmm. when i was a kid you were yeah, excited I grab, to go I'd walk a, in the snow i'd grab a hoodie only like a thick yeah. hoodie and that would be good enough for me mm-hmm. and it wouldn't be a big deal yeah so which is funny because this last winter when we had that massive snowstorm mm-hmm. and it was like three feet of snow, I went to the park with my dog and I had these like, they're double layered pants. So it basically they were waterproof in a way mm-hmm. and I had my boots on, but it was still like the snow was up to my waist, but I'm like, I'm just going to treat this like I was used to be a kid. And I just, I walked like a mile and a half, just drenched in like the snow. My dog was having a blast. Mm-hmm. It was kind of fun to go back into that, uh, like energy mentality. Mindset. Yeah. yeah being like a kid and not caring that I had all the snow. Cause now as an adult, normally like oh, I have so much snow on my pants, on my shoes or whatever. Mm-hmm. I didn't care. I just like, I'm just going to enjoy this for what it's worth. Nice. So, yeah. yeah. But you don't, but you don't remember anything other, like, uh, anything else, I guess the food, very different. Uh, you know, like what was the first restaurant? Mm-hmm. Do you remember anything like that you came to when in Utah that you remember? I mean, we would always stick to fast food cause it was like the cheapest thing. We couldn't afford anything that's, not that so i guess it's just like when i made my first friends and i went over and they were like oh do you want a sandwich like i've told this story a thousand times but yeah i love sandwiches Mm -hmm. but we never make cold sandwiches when you make a sandwich it's it's hot you know it's it's melted (laughs) cheese hot meat you know what i mean yeah almond meat yeah like a deli meat is fine but it's still hot like it's you put it on the whether it's in the oven on the stovetop is usually how we make it right aplastarlo you just smash it a little mm-hmm. bit if you want to so the bread is like thin and crispy and stuff and they just handed me this wonder bread with a cold ass <laughs> pea slice yeah. and ham and in my mind like my mom obviously taught us manners so i'm not gonna be like, what the hell is this mm-hmm. but i'm like what is this and so like i bit into it and then there, i wasn't introduced to mustard yet that was my first experience. white people love mustard because mm-hmm. it had mustard on it like, i don't like oh, this wow mm-hmm. so i force fed myself like half the sandwich uh-huh. and i go no thank you i'm full and i never asked for a sandwich like if they ever asked me for food again i'd say no and white people don't <laughs> force you to eat so they just they ask you one time then you're done like you're yeah. through yeah. if you are hungry you better say yes because you know latino <laughs> yeah, gonna like, oh, yeah. you're gonna eat anyways like you mm-hmm. know oh no thanks well, no, no well, you're, you're gonna, gonna eat food anyways you know mm-hmm. i didn't have that you know I, I guess that's one good thing where i'm like i don't want to eat crappy ass sandwiches <laughs> but now as an adult i don't mind cold sandwiches i still prefer hot sandwiches but on occasion i'll have a cold one yeah. mm-hmm. a little jimmy yeah make you shimmy yeah do you remember anything about florida oh it's just it's flat like it was it was kind of interesting when I would look around here. You'd see mountains, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think people know that in Utah if they've only lived in Utah. 
once they leave the state for like vacation you look around there's no it's you just whatever is in your immediate eyesight is what you see nothing off into the distance unless it's like a tall building or something mm -hmm. so that was like pretty wild for me yeah. and i get like i said like the lack of colored people mm -hmm. which again it's not it didn't bother me i just say i could it was different so when would you say you like kind of started remembering more stuff like how old were you about florida no just in general mm. what do you mean oh like when my memory started kicking in um i'd say elementary really like second grade third grade i remember like all my teachers from then i can't remember i don't think i can remember my second grade teacher i can not yeah no mm -hmm. mine yeah. was miss de la cruz de la cruz mm -hmm. my first grade I remember mary lou Oling wong yeah oh there was a uh, one thing you remember where uh puerto vallarta is on what is that 52nd 54 oh the restaurant mm -hmm. they were talking about the yeah you know he goes to resorts and stuff right? it's, <laughs> by the, it's the salt lake community college in mm -hmm. taylorsville there was actually some uh, government apartments that we lived in there i remember that oh. actually uh -huh. and i was uh like i guess because it was such a shock and i didn't know people my brother and i my, my dad would go to work my mom would obviously uh be a housekeeper mm -hmm. and my brother and i we had a nintendo system nes played a lot of nintendo mm -hmm. uh because it was a shitty area for all intents and purposes i remember like some of the neighborhood kids tried to get me to like throw rocks at cars to break their windows and stuff mm -hmm. and even back then like i know a lot of people say i have like a very stubborn or like strong personality i was like i didn't care that they were 10 years older like i, I feared my dad more than i feared them you know mm -hmm. like i'm not doing that so that was actually i, I forgot about that mm -hmm. i always remember because they'd ride around on bikes and like try to convinced me to do certain things mm -hmm. and i was like no he didn't give in to peer I, pressure i didn't give in fear to peer of pressure. your dad yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey that's fear in, in it has its healthy doses mm -hmm. being fearful of things is very appropriate and beneficial in my opinion mm -hmm. so yeah. what's like your memory of your first friends in utah in elementary mm. his name was aaron i think that we uh and you already spoke english yeah at that point i already started like i picked up on english pretty quick oh, okay. i remember my dad had a encyclopedia but it was like a picture one mm -hmm. and it had like different topics like one was food so i learned food through that one and then another one was like transportation so i got to learn about cars tires things like that another one was animals and whatever it's just like a encyclopedia that was spanish and english mm -hmm. so i was able to kind of which was nice because it helped me retain spanish more as well now that i lived in a mm -hmm. state that was made pretty much only english speaking um and he and i bonded over video games really because i guess i heard him talking about video games mm -hmm. and he had the nintendo 64 we were too poor for that I'm like no i've never heard of it like i've heard of the nintendo 64 because i saw it on tv commercials then he invited me over once very mm -hmm. nice family and then we played like and what about what were your parent your parents like when he invited you like was it saying, hey, my dad had amigo? already met his dad at like one uh, of the parent teacher conferences because mm -hmm. you know i saw him so we started chatting so my dad started chatting with his dad my dad felt good about going there and then we had he had invited me to like his scout group to do a couple things with like the boy scouts so at that point we had some rapport it was like over six seven months before i went to his mm -hmm. place and it was like to the i i felt he was so rich like he wasn't rich but he was a middle-class family yeah okay, mm -hmm. which is it's when you're very young, yeah. like somebody's got yeah. 10 he, more toys than you you're like my he had Nintendo mm -hmm. 64 at least like 30 games that i could tell yeah. he's yeah. got a blanket that's like you know like power ranger ton and he's rich yeah he got me into pokemon <laughs> cards he gave me like 50 pokemon cards and in my mind i'm like how could you even uh, afford mm -hmm. like how does your family afford they just hand out 50 pokemon cards right like <laughs> i'm on welfare and he's providing me the welfare uh, mm -hmm. and it was like pretty crazy to like think of all the stuff i kind of got into mm -hmm. and he he was like had he was a basketball fan so he'd like i just remember he had nba sheets on like his bed so like everything i was like this is so rich i couldn't like wrap my head around <laughs> it it was crazy how do you handle that uh see do with the uh like with the well you said you have a daughter she's going to be on like kindergarten or is it preschool which, preschool mm -hmm. it's like when she starts getting friends like how are you going to has anybody given you like a playbook with that or it's like when she's like oh i want to go to my friend's house like oh uh, we, we actually my husband and i have had talks about it and uh, to me it's like they can come over 
and i think that's how it was with us too because that how we were raised is like oh friends come over to our house but we don't go over to theirs um no sleepovers i remember one time i was allowed to sleep over um and i think i was already in middle school but like at 7 a.m my dad was there to pick me up yeah so i don't i would just feel more comfortable maybe getting to know the my daughter's friends and their parents but i think it would be really hard for me to let her go somewhere outside that is not our home what's a conversation like that you think you know it's like your kids are playing and like like oh yeah i guess our kids are friends like my name's you know jose like i think like like the teacher parent conference like when we go to when i go drop her off there's like a parent section okay and so for the parents that show up like 15 minutes before like to drop off their kid because we have to wait for the teacher to come out so i try to show up at least 15 minutes before and so i see parents there and so i feel like the vibe and you know what's funny i actually haven't really been able to talk to none of the parents oh really even though like i feel like i would i would thrive in that area because i talk about education to students and their their parents so i'm like why haven't i because you're the enemy able to you know? dang parents hate the education system Damn. <laughs> no. Damn. and there's there's one specific um mom that's like talks like very talkative and um and i you can tell that she volunteers she's like to, in my head is like the pta leader yeah, yeah, you know yeah. and i'm like i don't know how i feel yet like you know, oh, so it's so like, weird, huh? now it's, that you brought it up, yeah. yeah it's, do you it's, feel like there's an age difference? Because I think our age group is not having kids until later, oh, uh -huh. right? Where you're on the younger side as far as like you had your kids earlier than what most people our generation are mm -hmm. having. So do you feel that the, the parents you're interacting with are older or are they still about roughly your age? N I think they're right? older. They're older. Yeah. Probably older. older. Oh, wow. Or, or th it's not their first child. That's yeah. the thing. It's okay, not their first true, yeah. child, so okay. they have, um, they have other kids who are already in that school, but they're like maybe second, maybe third, fourth grade, and I have Metzli like barely walking. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. Just a bunch of parents just staring at each other all awkward. Hey, so you yeah, can we have right it. with the parents, you know. I do actually. Yeah. I don't even. I don't, I don't even really look at them. Like I look at their kid. I'm like, is that is that kid gonna hurt my child? And I actually volunteered just to see how, like, you know, how it is in the classroom. Sure. And I'm like, oh man, that kid doesn't share. Calypso don't like get close to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I don't actually. That brother was pretty. It's pretty interested i we haven't really talked to are these like affluent people like do you these people with like money or do you think most of them hold like jobs too because actually I, i've been thinking about that because it, it's hard to take your kid um because we take them at 12 so just and just for three hours sure like as a full-time employee that is hard and it's just tuesday thursday but um it's even hard for me just to take her at that time so i want to say either maybe they might be stay home parents um or maybe they work really close by but they all look like they they have time to do it um and right now i have time because i took all like a specific day off from work for this month okay but i start working remotely again next month so i don't know how that's gonna affect it yeah yeah so and is mm -hmm. it mostly boys or girls like dads or moms that do that moms yeah. are there a lot moms. of single moms i'm not making fun of this just yeah. like i feel like there are a lot of like i know a lot of single moms mm -hmm. so do you feel or i mean do you even know if there are single moms I don't, or? because i don't talk to them no uh, but it's only this is how many weeks are you into being a we started in, parent, parent, in know, august uh, preschool parent. so at least a month she's yeah, been there I think still like a, mm -hmm. their baby daddy's still in the picture no, I'm just saying that oh it's, there's still time for her to like warm up, right? Yeah. yeah. Only one month. Yeah. It's only mm -hmm. been a month since school started. Mm hmm. Because they started, I think, the end of August. August. And then okay. now September. And okay, they only go there sense. twice twice a week. Oh, yeah, to like mm -hmm. scoop each other out. Yeah. Names. Preschool. Preschool. Oh, okay. Mm hmm. I was, I was Preschool. thinking already kindergarten. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So maybe now with uh, trick or treating, that's when you can mingle a little They're bit. They're not single moms. Maybe. You're paying for preschool, okay? That's no, this one is you don't pay it's free huh? mm -hmm. preschool's free now mm -hmm. that's another thing i thought of when i was a kid that you just jogged my memory so i'm i'm having to play catch up because i'm learning english mm -hmm. right i'm trying to learn things and there were kids mm -hmm. in my class and i'm like oh this kid's pretty smart and then they talk about preschool 
and I'm like, my mind, I'm like, what is preschool? I'm like, this is school. When they say, oh like, yeah, we went to school pre-school. before you were supposed to go to school. Mm-hmm. So again, and also in my mind, I'm like, could you imagine being able to like do that? Mm-hmm. So, but it, is it preschool or Head Start? Because I think there's there's two. See, I never got too many. I never had a in that either. Like my yeah. mom, because mm-hmm. I told my mom that I remember, it's just like, oh no, I saw a Head Start, and I go, I don't know what that is. Like oh. to me, they're both the same thing. Mm-hmm. So. It's not even like a daycare school, isn't it? Like Head daycare, start, and it's like a school. So. I think so. Daycare, and they teach. I them feel like that. that's. I don't. I don't know because I think my mom she had to for Head Start. I think it was Head Start. Sh- they parents had to pay for that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and for at least the district that we're in, we don't have to. Okay. We don't have to pay. But either way, yeah, it just like mm-hmm. through my like, and even at the time, even as a kid, I'm like, oh, this kid, is like has an advantage over me mm-hmm. and not that i was yeah. putting myself in a victim mindset i'm like this kid's gonna know more than me so that actually fueled my fire like i want to be even smarter than this kid i was mm-hmm. pretty good in school because of that kind of thing like i wanted to not be the kid that stuck out by being dumb not knowing english mm-hmm. i think that's why i learned english pretty well is because like i would read the encyclopedia and dictionary to make sure i was pronouncing things correctly um i wouldn't that's a, I, I, like, I, I, I would I just show up. Books. I hit those books. Yeah. <laughs> and then fifth grade hit, and then they're like, "Yeah, your child's reading at yeah, a really PBS. low grade level." Mm. My brother and I spent hours watching PBS because yeah. we didn't have cable TV. Mm. Um, so like we didn't, you know, people like, "Oh, the old Disney, Disney." is the crap show it is now for me since it's been as a kid. You know, <laughs> uh, no Nickelodeon for me, no cartoon. Not, only if I were at someone else's house yeah. and they had one again mm. that to me was rich like yeah because my parents were like we're not we don't have the money for that you get right? to watch dexter that's or the powerpuff girls yeah mm-hmm. i love dexter was my favorite mm. and that was the one that most people didn't watch yeah. at least the friends oh I really had. i like dexter and dexter was my Nettie. favorite those were my favorite i never liked that and eddie yeah I couldn't uh, get into it. Oh, I love Ed and Eddie. Eddie. No. Ed, 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 Ed and Eddie. Yeah. No. I didn't like it. Because they were always making some sort of this. And this. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> but yeah, it was. I had. A, I mean, despite all that, I, I loved my childhood. I mm. I look back on my childhood like very, very fondly. Mm-hmm. It was a good time. I loved it. I couldn't ask for like a like. I loved it. Okay. Well, what's one thing overall that you have liked about Utah? That I liked about Utah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know about now. Maybe it still is, but like it was very family friendly back then. Mm-hmm. Like I, I really felt that there were a lot of things catered towards families, um, so it felt relatively safe regardless of where I was at. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. But, cool. Um, sorry, the outdoor stuff is nice. What outdoor stuff? Like do you just like? being able to drive within forty-five minutes and being like secluded in a mm-hmm. mountain in a at a canyon, mm-hmm. fishing, whatever, all within like. 35 40 mi- five, 45 minute drive mm-hmm. okay. uh, that's actually probably the best thing about utah mm. so stop moving here okay i i don't want these things to be pushed out further <laughs> let's see for me i remember i remember life maybe <laughs> this one do you know this question is good because like to me I, I always wonder when people remember when they're living you mm. know because for me i think i remember like when i'm like two and a half almost like two and a half, three years old. Oh, that's I really young. Re- I can't recall like, that. I can, Very uh, young. Like I, so I, so I moved to the U.S. when I was six, but mm-hmm. I still remember like when I lived in Mexico. Like I lived with my grandma, and for a little bit, I remember we'd have to sleep. At first, it was like in the side life. My parents, because my parents were in here in the U.S., mm-hmm. they just wanted to have me in Mexico to be a patriot. You know, <laughs> like he has. We can't have an American son. Like he has to be Mexican. Mm so they have me in mexico and then they just leave me with my grandma <laughs> but so i would just remember so it was cool with my grandma was like i have all my cousins over there right so i would mm-hmm. have all my cousins uh i mean all my family basically so i just remember like from a young age my favorite things like in mexico growing up were like when it would hail or like there's thunderstorms because mm-hmm. then the power would go out you know mm-hmm. And then your grandma has like all the candles and stuff like that so she set up all the candles and we just like sit in the living room and stuff mm-hmm. like that and talk and things like that mm-hmm. uh and since i was like one of the youngest like i would always be with my grandma so all my other cousins would be like in school so she'd have to take them to elementary and stuff like that mm-hmm. and i would get to stay with my grandma so i'd go to you know run errands with her and stuff like that mm-hmm. And she would cook stuff for me. So she'd be like, oh, Katusa, you know, mm-hmm. they come at like breakfast. Like she would give, give me like eggs and stuff like that. Or she would always make me longanisa. It's like chorizo. I know what it is. She would make me that mm-hmm. and she'd like dip the tortilla in the oil. I remember that. Mm-hmm. So, and then, so the tortilla would be just like red, you know? 
after and just like crispy and oh that she would always make me that and i was like uh super good so i love that and i remember one time like hell when it held it was always so fun mm -hmm. uh but one time the actual the volcano over there uh erupted oh and there was like uh, ashes just like we probably had about an inch of ashes uh-huh and um what's so funny now is like they just like my grandma would just let us play outside so we're just like running around in the ashes you know <laughs> rubbing ashes <laughs> all over us and stuff like that so he's like yeah i thought it was like poisonous you know mm -hmm. uh and uh let's see then i remember i did go to school over there because you could start school a little bit earlier mm -hmm. uh so over there i was like already in second grade and over here i, I wouldn't have i don't think even started school yet Mm -hmm. uh but i didn't remember the school over there like at the beginning of the week you have to do like well you know like when you did the pledge of allegiance here yes so you started school like that in mexico like mm -hmm. uh you started like that but you have to do like you have to raise the flag mm -hmm. all the kids are outside mm -hmm. they have to do the national anthem and then they have other like speeches of like almost like if we're talking about like the gettysburg address or like they're talking about los niños mm -hmm. and, like different speeches of like did you want water the oh, yes. the country you. you know so they're like you have to chant all of that mm -hmm. at the beginning of the week and then you have to uh, you. start school and you raise the flag uh and you do that uh and i remember one time my mom in school like we were doing like a play uh in mexico and we were going to be like little bees right so we're gonna be like little bees and uh I remember I knew what bees looked like. I was always like curious. I was always like looking at things. And my mom made me like my bees, like the stripes were like really small. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, bees don't got like a bunch of little stripes. I only got a couple big ones, you know, like, like three stripes. That's the bee, three, four stripes. And I remember I was like, I was probably like, I don't know, four, you know, I was like so mad. My mom was making me this like, she made it like out of paper mache, like it was going to be a uh, pinata. And then she like painted it, and I remember I was like, "That's not a bee." I remember telling her, "Like that's not what a bee looks like," you know. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, I show up to school, and we have our little like bee antennas, our little wings, mm -hmm. and I go there. Everybody looks like an actual bee, right? And I just had the little stripes. All the kids had the big stripes. I was so mad, you know. You look like a prisoner. Yeah. <laughs> I had a little tiny look like a wasp, you know. Like, and I just remember I was so upset, and it's funny like my cousin actually sent me a picture of the uh of me and the beat dude and i was just as upset in the picture i look you could tell i just like was just ready to mm -hmm. cry you know so i remember that and other things that were fun about mexico is just like i had the whole house to explore like i was saying but the house was so big i would always get into stuff i was always wanted to figure out how things worked so like i remember one time i touched like a power line and lu lucky for me it was like a like a dead wire but i climbed up to be like dude i wonder it's like how the elect i'm trying to figure out how the electricity works i'm like it goes from this pole probably goes up to this pole like so i'm trying to figure out how electricity works so i like, climb up like upstairs and just like grab this you know hold on to dear life you know <laughs> and it didn't, it didn't shock me but i was always do stuff like that and i've told hosts i think i'm not sure if we've talked about it here like we had a store right next to my my grandma mm -hmm. And I would, uh, I stole like a, a, ch a chisel, a chisel mm -hmm. and a hammer. And I was like trying to dig into the store because it was right next to my grandma's house. They're like wall to wall, right? Mm -hmm. They're just made out of concrete. So when my grandma would go drop off my cousins, I would like, I had like a 30 minute window to like start <laughs> chiseling into the thing. <laughs> so like eventually I made it to the other side. But what I didn't know is that it wasn't just going to be like, the a store hole, mm. a hole like i just thought i would be there but i a bunch of debris went into the store right uh -huh. so like i knocked out rocks into there like dude what the hell so they got mad mm -hmm. so i remember that about mexico i remember fireworks were always like a super cool thing uh the parks over there were really fun like mm -hmm. they have like uh it's called el bosque and i just remember you my grandma would take us and um you would take like two like you take a bucket so we would all take a bucket and we were all like you know three to maybe seven my oldest cousins mm -hmm. and the boss was like a giant almost like if it was uh i think liberty park or what's the one with the big pond here is it liberty park mm -hmm. the big pond yeah sugar I think it's house? liberty park oh 
It's Sugar House. House. No, it's the one like on. I think it's Liberty Park. Okay. It's Liberty Park. Well, let's, I don't I'll, let's go with Liberty Park. Yeah, it's fine. But she, it would be like a bus that got a bunch of big trees, and you could rent mm-hmm. like these cool bikes that had like, they had a uh, like. It was like three in the front, two in the back, and everybody mm-hmm. could pedal. And they had mm-hmm. like a cold seat, and like your whole family like would take that. So all mm-hmm. of our cousins, so it would be all the kids mm-hmm. would take the bike, and then like my aunts and my grandma and stuff would they would ride on the other bike, and we would have to pedal to like this lake thing. And uh, they like us take buckets and get some uh, fish charales, mm-hmm. like the little hatchlings, you know. Okay. So then you come back to my grandma's house, and we would all have like a giant bucket of uh, <laughs> of a book <laughs> fish. Yeah. And we'd see who would like could keep them you know the longest but they mm-hmm. would all die so fast you know mm-hmm. but they would buy us like little food for them and stuff like that mm-hmm. but yeah eventually the fish would die and then i remember i didn't really see my parents till i was maybe like five mm-hmm. and uh so i my this my whole life basically that i remember was like in mexico and with my grandma and then it's like oh you're gonna go to the u.s right mm-hmm. and i remember i was like i did not want to leave like i was just like crying so bad like i was mm-hmm. in a taxi just like holding on to the back seat so i'm like dude i'm not gonna leave like my grandma you know mm-hmm. so i wasn't even excited uh to go to the u.s but i got to the u.s 1997 i got there there was a harlan apartments in glendale and it was a two-bedroom and then we had one bedroom i think they were eventually like rented it out but like one bedroom we just had like a mattress on the floor that's what it was Mm -hmm. and i can't remember there being like i don't think we even had a couch yet Mm -hmm. when i moved in uh but i didn't know obviously i didn't know any english or anything like that but my Mm -hmm. dad he would just like told me he's like hey if like the only thing he showed me was like shut up stop and shut up so he's like Mm -hmm. if you have if you feel like a kid's being mean to you you tell him stop Mm-hmm. you know say stop and it's like and if they're still being mean he's like you just tell them to shut up and it's like after shut up if like they're still being rude he's like just beat them up is what he said you know mm-hmm. so that's like the three things that like my dad uh told me from my when i move in so it's like my first day of school mm-hmm. in uh in elementary and it was uniform so it was either blue navy but you know they give you a manual and they also had yellow yeah so i remember my mom gets me like the yellow yeah, <laughs> the yellow ranger, you know? <laughs> so i go to school everybody's wearing white or blue and khaki and i'm wearing the alternate colors you know i got yeah. the yellow shirt i got i'm looking there like you look like ukraine flag you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i got their first day of school and it was like i was actually in the same class as my sister i was just one year younger than me but she never went to school in mexico yeah. so like they had to pull her out like she was only there for like two weeks mm-hmm. and uh they had to pull her out the first thing that tripped me out about american school was the uh fluoride oh remember you'd have I to forgot yeah, about you fluoride. had to so, yeah yeah so, you had to uh, switch uh, it i always ask for grape yeah yeah <laughs> always. so yeah because first i got bubble gum and i was like oh that's bubble gum is so gross. Man, yeah so I was like what is this you know so we uh but mine was in spanish my teacher was in spanish yeah. so mary lou she spoke spanish but my sister she was out of my class mm-hmm. like after the first week and that same first week like the uh the school b- bully it was this polynesian kid tonu mm-hmm. and he was huge i had never seen a polynesian kid and there was he was already like pretty tall pretty big thick mm-hmm. and i didn't know like he was trying to be rude i told him like well my dad should stop you don't shut up and he was still trying to like like punk me and stuff like that mm-hmm. you know and i remember i just like i started punching him and he just like cried and i like I'm like okay he left me alone but now mm-hmm. like i was so scared as a kid that i wasn't going to be able to explain that he was trying to bully me mm-hmm. so i'm like oh like this kid's crying he left to go tell on me and mm-hmm. i'm new to the school I don't speak any English. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to be able to defend myself that this kid was being rude to Mm -hmm. me, you know? So, like, I get to class super scared, right? Turns out, well, I'm waiting for him to, well, the principal or whatever to come here. They're just like, hey, I'll say you're going to go to a different class. I'm like, oh, great tone who probably told on me, right? Mm -hmm. So, they just, hey, you're going to go to this uh, other different class. I go there. It's ESL. 
Uh-huh. Right? So I got Extremely the... slow learner. Uh-huh. <laughs> now wait for this, though. English second language. Okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got to ESL, right? Mm-hmm. And they just said, hey, I was going to go to ESL. So it's like, nobody walked me there. I just like had to figure out where it was and a couple other kids, like I just followed them. Mm-hmm. And I'm like an ESL and like they get there and like, like, who are you? I'm like, yeah, I'm Jose. And they're look, they look at me like I'm just like crazy, you know, mm-hmm. like even the ESL teachers like looking at me weird. Mm-hmm. Turns out there was another Jose oh. <laughs> in class and it was Brown Jose, mm-hmm. you know, so that's why they were looking at me all weird because mm-hmm. I'm like a little bit lighter. So they were expecting well, Jose, you know, and Juanito to go. Mm-hmm. That's what they were expecting. I'm like, no, it's me, you know, it's so like, no, you haven't changed, you know, like, mm-hmm. so yeah, so I come back and then uh, Jose, that other Jose, he used to always pee his pants. Mm. Uh, so he always smelled like pee. Remember when, like, yeah, yeah in mm. elementary, like kids yeah. that smelled like pee? That was what said. So mm. I actually overcame. Uh, I took his name. Two weeks into the club, you were the host. I was the host. He went by Francisco. <laughs> That's funny because he smelled like pee. You know, yeah. So people didn't like him. So I remember. I guess I remember that about. Uh, well, Utah. But before I went to Utah, we actually stopped in. Uh, it was like El Paso, or like they're in the border mm. of Mexico and uh, Texas because mm-hmm. we had to get uh, natural, well, our residency or whatever. Mm. So I remember mm. we actually lived like in a like a hotel mm-hmm. for mine, it must have been like three, four months. And from there, I just remember like we would be like in a hotel and there was like they had radio antennas mm-hmm. that you could see like up in the mountain. My parents would trick me, so I still miss my grandma. Mm-hmm. And my grandma lived right next to radio antennas. Mm-hmm. So, like, my parents would be like, oh, your grandma's just over there. It's not that far. You see that mountain? It's like, that's where your grandma mm-hmm. is. Like, we're not too far yeah. away from her. <laughs> you know? Hey. So, like, yeah. I was thinking about my grandma. And I remember we would always go, like, on the weekend. We would walk to this, like, breakfast place. Mm-hmm. that had, like, a giant, uh, what is it, a marlin, a swordfish? Yeah. Like, on the mm-hmm. wall. Just like a... It's like a giant thing on the wall and we mm-hmm. would go there every weekend to have like breakfast and we would walk back and i remember that's the first time that i saw a dollar because th- there in the border you could pay either with uh pesos or you could pay with us dollars mm-hmm. so i remember it's like oh it's this many pesos and then like my dad's like oh well i'll, I'll give you one dollar or whatever mm-hmm. i was like what well, he only gave him one bill instead of like i thought it was like that the guy was stupid you know the yeah. uh, salesman i'm you like why would play. you just take yeah. Well, one bill that says one mm-hmm. opposed to like the one that says like it was like 20 or whatever you know pesos I'm like well this guy's like such an idiot you know mm-hmm. so i remember we were waiting to get uh to the well to the united states and my parents had submitted all the paperwork paid all the fines and stuff like that to be arrested in, and then they're like oh you guys actually can't uh afford to have two kids in the u.s so we're gonna deny you so even though they had already paid a bunch of stuff, yeah. right? Like they're like, no, you're the night. Like we're not going to approve you. You're already at. You're already like. I think it was like ten grand or something like that. Damn. Like, you're already out of your money, basically, is what they told them. But my dad worked for in the Salt Palace, mm-hmm. and his uh, supervisor actually ended up being our sponsor. Oh. So he uh, sponsored us to go to the uh, well to come to the U.S. Mm-hmm. And I remember, so he gets to the U.S. Maybe like that week off, right? Like. Mm-hmm. They dress me all nice. I don't know how to say anything. They take me over to the Salt Palace to my dad, you know, to, <laughs> go, <laughs> to go meet, you know, this guy. I can't remember what it's, I think his name was Tom something, but uh, like he's had like white hair and stuff like that, like a mustache, you know, like a gray mustache. And like, oh, you got to tell him thank you. They're trying to tell me what to tell him in English. I'm like, I'm not going to remember none of this. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you got to go shake his hand. And yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. I never saw him again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He was basically like a co-signer. Yeah. So yeah, that's like probably what I remember uh, from the beginning. I had to beat up Tonu. And then I do remember uh, the my first Halloween, there was already snow. Like in Halloween. And I was Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. But I was Spider Man with the wings, the things on the back. The I hated yeah. that. You know, I was yeah. like, I like this. I'm like, why am I? They <laughs> hate. So like, why am I this Spider Man? You know, you were very ungrateful. I that, know. I was you know? gonna I'm say kidding. that. I'm kidding. This <laughs> Spider Man. I like, said so I was like, what is this? Because I never saw him like that on the movies. You know. Yeah. So I just remember like Halloween was pretty cool that I was excited for. But it, to me, it was fun because there was still like uh, people that spoke Spanish. 
so i think maybe that's what made it easier for me to move to utah because like people spoke spanish and then like the first mexican restaurant that i remember going to it was like in 1998 i went to rey de oros the original one was like a 900 west and they had tacos and i was like holy crap they sell tacos in the u.s you know mm. and everybody just spoke spanish and they took your order in spanish yeah and they like handed you a plate of tacos and they had beans and stuff like that i'm like that's crazy you know <laughs> so that's like probably the coolest thing that i remember when i was younger when that's i funny. first went to a mexican mm-hmm. restaurant i'm like wow everybody here spoke spanish like you know everybody was just like being i remember warm. that going to like uh because mm-hmm. obviously the ingredients that we use aren't typical for uh american eaters and even then obviously like i guess mexican was the only stores that they had it was la herradura de oro right mm-hmm. there it's like oh on, yeah mm-hmm. and i just remember it did like i just remember the store didn't smell anything like i'm accustomed to right like it i don't know it's not an offense but it just smelled mexican right like mm-hmm. i'm like okay this doesn't smell familiar they don't talk the same way i'm used to because in miami it's cubans and basically like haitians puerto ricans dominicans so it's like caribbean spanish mm-hmm. uh, or caribbeans uh so like the ingredients were different like the way that people spoke were different mm-hmm. and even though i know they spoke spanish because i could understand some of what they said or most of what they said other than like the small things it's like they even looked a little bit different because they were like the more indigenous looking kind you know like mm. so even then like familiar territory because of spanish but even that was like a different cultural uh thing like the music was way different yeah. too mm. right which i was familiar with some of the songs because but like some of the like the the ranchera or the banda that's we don't listen to that so mm-hmm. like this is very very different and the food is obviously very different but my mom would go there because to, to get certain ingredients for certain dishes that she would cook mm-hmm. but i just that was always like a, a trip and then you know they had like the tamarindo the tamarind lollipops yeah. that were mm-hmm. covered in like chile mm-hmm. not i yet to like those there was ones that you gave me that were pretty good oh yeah but as a kid, i hated them man they were disgusting to me i'm like because i just like tamarindo like i just want are good. sour yeah. sweet okay. something as a kid I, did, I didn't want that. that's not what i was used to did you try so. the pulparindo in the on the table that i had for metzi's i actually stayed away from sugar because i've been trying to cut out okay. a lot of sugar because uh, i realized i eat a lot of sugar recently i don't know why i've never been a big sugar like sweet tooth person mm. so i've been trying to reduce the amount of sugar i had so i thought i allowed myself one coke because i know paul was gonna have coke there of course mm-hmm. so i had a, a coca-cola after i had a, a burger and then i just like i wanted a cupcake but i didn't have one either okay so you didn't try the Pulparino's mexican really no but i'll try right it okay I'll try well, it. let's see if i can bring some yeah mm-hmm. so good, right? but yeah but they, that's different too. and then i saw like uh i remember my first mexican friend began he would put like tajin on fruit not something we do mm-hmm. so it was like just there's we share a common aspect being the spanish language and i think our upbringing and some of the values for sure are the same but there's still very did you make cultures. more white mm-hmm. friends and mexican friends at the at first yes like uh-huh. so i just remember like for the f- many many years there might have been one the, so we always had four classes in our group like right there's a b c and d class like it didn't matter it was just four different classes to each grade four different teachers so wherever your homeroom was you like there may be three latinos and i may have never ended up in a class with one of them maybe once and that was second grade that was miguel that was like the first actual other spanish speaker that was paired with me in a classroom but other than that they were always like in a different class so i'd only maybe see them at recess or something mm-hmm. yeah so yeah it was mostly just white friends i remember uh that i had first for sure dang that's crazy mm-hmm. yeah yeah because my most of my friends uh beginning were probably mexican a couple bosnian but it was yeah. mostly like all mexican i did do the, the same thing that you did too with like reading and stuff like that yeah like i was saying like i i only had to go to spanish class like first grade and a little bit of second grade mm-hmm. and then they put me to uh in, in english mm-hmm. so i actually learned all the bad words last because i was like <laughs> learning so far you know like mm-hmm. so fast like i thought it was just like a regular word like Mm-hmm. i would just like say a swear word out loud in class and i would get a problem wrong mm-hmm. and then people would be like oh pa, 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 pa. He said uh, the word. Yeah. yeah i remember that <laughs> now, do kids even say that anymore and they're like he said it again you know? <laughs> and they tell me oh say you don't say that you know but i got into reading because they did the accelerated reading sure programs mm-hmm. you guys remember that yeah, yeah. and you'd have to collect points so i was always like competitive 
Mm. And I noticed like a lot of the questions, like if you just like skim through the book like fast and stuff like that, or yeah. figure out the plot. Like I figured out how to answer the questions <laughs> to like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I could at least get like a like enough to get the points. Of course. So I would I got hooked on accelerated readers and Cam Jensen's always ended up like reading and just like uh the thing I wouldn't do encyclopedias but the thing that I liked was like the the uh the Guinness World Records. That's a great book. I think most little boys love that book. So mm -hmm. I would find like this country and then I would have to, oh, I would look up that country, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. like, oh, this person is from this place. And I would have to like, oh, where is this on the map? Mm -hmm. And then I would like look at the globe and stuff like that and try to find the records from like uh, the, the world records, like, you know, mm -hmm. from where it's uh, on the actual map. So uh, and like I got really into music. Mm -hmm. So I, I figured out really easy how to like uh, record on like record your own tape. Like when I was like, I don't know, maybe like six or seven and mm. I would record like the songs and I would write them down. So I would record the songs on the cassette and then I would play a couple words mm -hmm. and then I would write it, write the first word like that I learned. Some of them I didn't learn, so I would have a dictionary. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to like write like word for word, like on a tape, like rewind, you know, and then play whatever pause. And then I would write the whole thing in English. Mm. like all the lyrics i would try to write all of it in english mm -hmm. and then i would like translate it into spanish like i have the dictionary it's like spanish to english yeah. mm -hmm. it's like oh this is what this song's about you yeah know? <laughs> hey, that was very discovery. smart yeah. very smart <laughs> they were bad songs you know but <laughs> 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 what song do you remember my first down? one that i remember that i thought was the, the coolest song that i heard in english was shaggy mr boombastic <laughs> Because he goes, the Mr. Boombust. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, I never heard English like that. You know, I'm like, what is he saying? Mm. The blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so I like, I was trying to figure out, like, figure out what he's saying in English. You know, and trying then, to write down, try to down yeah. how it sounds sound. like. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so that one I just remember it took me so long, but I remember when I like finally, like, that one probably took me like three weeks. And I remember, like, I finally deciphered, like, the all the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And I remember I would just, just like, I would play the song and I would just call myself and just read the lyrics. Mr. Loa Loa. <laughs> Gee whiz, baby, please let me take you to an island of your sweet cold dreams. That was like my favorite part mm -hmm. when that part broke down. And I just remember I could read the lyrics. I was like, oh, yes. That's I funny. figured it out. I love making the, mm -hmm. the little Jamaican voice, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know he was Jamaican. Like, I, That's funny. I thought he sounded cool. I think he grew up in Brooklyn, though. Yeah? I think so. Mm -hmm. But yes, yeah, he's Jamaican. Well, that was like so fun. That's probably one of my my best memories uh, from that. And uh, did I tell you when I, my grandma beat me up or no? I think I might have. No, I don't, I don't know. know. I, know I know it, but I don't think so. But like the first one of the first songs that I heard in the U.S. was uh, I I stole one of my dad's tapes and it was uh, Led Zeppelin Whole Lot of Love, mm -hmm. and it's like a rock song and it just starts with like oh. a guitar. It's like. Uh -huh. dun, 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 dun. Yeah. And I remember my grandma came to visit from Mexico, and I was like, oh, my grandma, I'll see her. I love my mm -hmm. grandma so much. And I remember I was just like, grandma, grandma, look, I'm going to show you this. <laughs> like, I had stolen this tape from my dad. You know, I've been sleeping with it. It was like, <laughs> I would have played when he was gone. <laughs> like, just that one mm -hmm. song. Like, I never made it through the whole tape because I love that song so much. And I remember I was like, I, my dad had like a good stereo system. Mm -hmm. And I remember like, I'm like, grandma, sit down. I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to play you the song from America. You know, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> so excited! He's like, I remember I press play. He's like, da, 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 da. and then like the bass kicks in. I'm like, oh my god! And she's like, esa música del diablo. And she started, you know, beating me, giving me like and stuff like that. <laughs> and she took the tape. She's like, don't listen. She's like, you're a good boy. You don't listen to me. <laughs> like that anymore. <laughs> That's so funny. You're stoked to show your grandma. Yeah. She says you're a heathen. Beats the <laughs> shit out of you. That's so funny. I was just like, dude. Literally, I was like so pumped up. Like that's mm -hmm. the only thing I could think of. Like showing my grandma. I <laughs> <laughs> like, want to show her. Let's sample it. She's like the super religious old Mexican lady. <laughs> but, yeah. That's way funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny what about for your, maybe for you guys well, well what about you let's ask you because you don't get to share that much um i was born in um 
California, but I don't know much about California. But from California, my parents moved. Well, I guess I went with them to Mexico as well. Um, I don't remember much. I, I don't remember. I would say anything. I seen videos. Um, I think they celebrated my third birthday over there with a bunch of kids that weren't my. I had no idea who they were. Sure. But I had my birthday there. Um, and then my parents came back uh, to the U.S., but they ended up coming to Utah because I heard there was really good job opportunities. Um, and so when we came, when they, I stayed there with my grandma for I think nine months is what they said, um, which is why I, I, I feel like I, I like going back because I feel loved over there because they, they're like, oh, I remember you were in here because they took care when of me when I was kid. younger. Yeah, they always yeah. throw that in your face. I used, uh -huh. to, you know, I used to cook for you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I used to change your diaper. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I don't care. Don't tell me that now, you know? Yeah. Anyways, yeah. So I, that's, I like going back. But um, when we came to Utah, we stayed in um, an area where it just seemed like the people from Guerrero, Oaxaca stayed and they kind of created their own community so i grew up to spanish and then i learned english at school okay but i i was very shy and i i never took the initiative to be like oh i want to learn english right and so i was put i think in esl classes as well um but i didn't i don't know i was just from from school to home help my mom and it wasn't until i think towards elementary sorry thank you, you. Yeah. towards elementary i was getting bullied in like kindergarten um and so my parents would beat me up because i would get beat up by the other kid and so my mom got tired of it and so they enrolled me in taekwondo and that's how i knew oh, that, wow. yeah that's how i knew how to count yeah and so since i've been in since i was in taekwondo nobody messed with me not even my primas because i'm the oldest of my cousins and they would be so me you have the authority would you ever mm -hmm. use taekwondo on kids I, no i you never had to use it i never had to use oh, it oh man i would be so disappointed like yeah, no i didn't yeah. it was just a title so it was just a title the nobody title alone nobody showed messed. respect yeah nobody messed with me she anymore. would pick her white belt you know yeah. mm -hmm. school caucasian <laughs> what, what was your maybe your first and i guess maybe for you it was like your first like minority experience where you felt like oh i'm a minority or like that i'm different maybe that you felt maybe less than or different like i think in oh, that's a good question I'm trying to think before before high school because in high school i went to a high school where they did ib um and so a lot of like what's the, ib oh, ib oh, the I think international or inter something it's like where you take like credits for that to count towards college oh. so college credit courses ish but oh. not concurrent enrollment you still had to take you took a course like the smart kids took the course and then if they passed then they would get credit for it um for like college oh mm -hmm. is that the same as ap yeah like ap is just ib oh okay. yeah so okay. it's like i'm not sure why there's a difference but um that they had that at the school and so a lot of rich kids would go to the that high school specifically um for that program so this is when you were in high school in high school okay. yeah and so you would see like our um people of color or students of color like they were just drop out like you would each year you would see a bunch of them drop out okay mm -hmm. is it because you had to pay for the testing or something or do you mm -hmm. feel that they didn't feel adequate to pass the test for sorry i meant dropped out of high school completely oh, so okay, it, okay. not a lot that i remember not a lot of um but my for friends you, that's how you felt yeah like, okay. yeah i well mainly because i didn't i don't think i was like the spotlight student so nobody ever told my parents hey your mm. your daughter can enroll in this program um i wasn't very i would say smart or nobody really paid attention to me so i had a very average grades gotcha so i think only the students that had really good grades were the ones that would go to ib or concurrent enrollment classes so and i wasn't i prefer going to the gym yeah yeah my gym classes you want me to let them out classes. i can let them out okay yeah. mm -hmm. um so for the minority experience, that's interesting. That's when you found out was in high school. In high school, that's yeah. how you felt. You, oh man, mm -hmm. I think mine came at an early age, and I never considered myself. I know we had uh, mm -hmm. a, an episode where we talked about like cultural identity and things like that, right? Or mm -hmm. uh, like how we're treated different. I just remember there was this uh, Bateman's gas station near one of the, the apartments that we lived in. So my brother and at the time his best friend Danny, white kid. We walked to the gas station, 
and there's like sodas and chips obviously typical gas station and it was conjoined with like a burger king right mm-hmm. so my brother and his uh buddy danny go buy something at burger king and i'm like trying to kill time i was gonna buy something anyway so i grabbed some chips i grabbed a soda i had to have been 12 at the time 12 13 maybe so my brother still hadn't driven yet and then we just walked because it was like a block away i remember i remember this lady's face because of she was always there Mm-hmm. Um, I, I paid for my chips and my soda. I had cash, right? I didn't have a credit card. I'm thir- tw- uh, 12 years old. She hands me back the change and I count it. And like, I, but I stepped aside. So I moved my chips and my soda to the side. Mm-hmm. I count my change and I go, Hey, you uh, shortened me tw- uh, two bucks as she was about to scan somebody else. Mm-hmm. She goes, Oh, you probably just pocketed it. And I just remember flipping instantly because mm-hmm. she was already watching me, right? Like, mm-hmm. and I go, "You want to come back behind the counter? I'm still here. I haven't even pocketed. I'm counting. It's in my hand. You, mm-hmm. I give you permission to search me. Like, I just instantly mm-hmm. like. I'm, and my brother doesn't like confrontations. I could already tell he was kind of. He knew where I was. I'm going sorry. To how old mm-hmm. were you? About twelve, twelve mm-hmm. or thirteen, maybe. No, no, no older than thirteen. But I'm already like mouthing off there. I'm like, you can check right now. I haven't even moved anywhere. And like, mm-hmm. I'm good at English now. I've had plenty of years to study it. Uh, I always had like a pretty short fuse and then she just like stared at me and I could tell that like, you know, I, I basically schooled her and the adults knew too, cause mm-hmm. there was a line and they saw me like, I didn't pocket anything. And then, so at that point she's like, Oh, I can tell you're kind. You were just like, uh, sitting around here. You probably stole something. And I'm like, Oh, you really think we're still, I'm not, I'm not shopping here again. Like I just mouthed off to her. Mm-hmm. And then like one of the adults even said, Hey, that's not okay like this is a kid or whatever mm-hmm. Damn, so like crazy, that was like my dude. first experience and mm-hmm. i'll say i hadn't had very many so again mm-hmm. that's a, a lot of it's just like just how i behave or whatever but like i could tell she targeted me for that mm-hmm. that was like one of the only instances like i don't ever feel i'm in that mindset unless i truly feel they're intentionally targeting me if that makes sense yeah so yeah yeah i was 13 mm-hmm. she was just now i remember i remember how that lady looked i could mm-hmm. probably draw her pretty accurately right now just because i remember mm-hmm. that experience was like remember. so blatantly like obvious to me i just remember on the way back home like i was still like pretty mad and my brother's buddy danny's like dude man he goes it was so cool that you were able to just like defend yourself and yell at mm-hmm. an adult like that i'm just like dude she just pissed me off yeah. so that was my first like minority experience before that i mean maybe there was some i didn't really feel i had any mm-hmm. but that for sure was the time where i'm like i was definitely targeted for that mm-hmm. I never had mm-hmm. any like that where I grew up, like in Glendale, you know, because it was like so mixed. Sure, everybody mm-hmm. was like, even the white people were just Boston, or they were just like some you know, European, well off, you know. Mm-hmm. But they yeah. were just like Afghan, Pakistani. They were like, yeah. So, but I, I think I, I mean, I kind of like your point to put it to school sometimes. Cause sometimes it's not even maybe. Well, what's the word like? Um, that. I think a lot of the times maybe it's like not that we don't want to maybe it's uh, sometimes that we don't know how to nobody can help us with like like cooler programs you know what i mean mm-hmm. like when you're like maybe first generation like student or anything like that because i always like to do like skills usa which was like for uh i would do like graphics screen printing stuff like that mm-hmm. and i was like always one of like the only like mexican kids that would ever enroll in those so like it almost makes you feel weird right because like your mm-hmm. parents don't even know what the heck it is. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, none of your friends know what it is. Mm-hmm. And you're like going there. It's like, you do feel like a little bit out of place, you know? It's like, oh, it's like, like, so maybe you don't even, I don't know, maybe if I wouldn't, like, I took it pretty serious, but I maybe, I didn't have like the view of like, maybe how, maybe beneficial or how many, how much more I could do if mm-hmm. somebody's like, oh, with this, you can actually go into this, 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 and this. Because they're like nobody knew. I was like the only one that barely knew about this, and mm-hmm. I just knew it as a competition. But I didn't know like all the other like cool things that you can enroll on other programs or like you know places to visit or whatever to mm-hmm. like learn new traits. So I think that is pretty hard sometimes for uh, I don't know for your parents or or t- I guess for you to figure out. Sometimes that can be mm-hmm. overwhelming, you know. Like mm-hmm. it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I th- and and I never took any of those honors or IB. Um, classes but my sister after me did she was really smart um and so and i didn't know until not too long ago that she was saying that because she would 
qualify for the IB classes, but she said that none of her friends were there and she felt out of place. She didn't yeah. know really. It felt intimidating to her. Yeah. So she dropped down to just honor classes. I see. So I'm yeah. like, damn, like if you would have done IB, you would have gotten your college credit, which would then put you ahead you know um, as you started college right and then by then i was already um like going to college and i was telling her take concurrent roman classes like but that's because i knew that because i learned that in college Mm. right because i was already working there that's how i found out about those stuff i did not find that in high school so dude uh, enrolling for college is kind of crazy when you think Mm -hmm. about it right like all they've told these you know teenagers is Mm -hmm. you have to go is basically what they tell you but they don't even i don't feel anyone i'm i feel like i'm pretty i catch on pretty quick to things and like the process to apply like yeah sure you sign something maybe it's easier now this is over a decade for me that i even considered it mm-hmm. but like this overwhelming on what you have to do why you need this like and something has to make sense for me to wrap my head around it mm-hmm. right or even want to do it so yeah. they're like oh you need this this and this like well i don't want that i want this right like back to the art classes like i, I didn't take any art classes that's mostly what i wanted to I'm like I, I now i want to learn from like professors and people that dived in specialty and they're like well you need to take this math class you need to take this i'm just like ah whatever i'm just gonna go keep like i still make money Cause since i was 13 i always had like a, a job some sort of job like so i just uh, delved into the workforce and never really left until recently so mm-hmm. but that just the idea of college and university but it's like your parents mm-hmm. also didn't know like say like oh just go get your yeah. generals for yeah, now they don't know or that. like yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so because i did the same thing i just showed up i, I went one year of college i like went there by myself you know got all my classes mm-hmm. like set up your i didn't even get that stuff. far though like, because dang, bro. because i mm-hmm. if i feel i don't understand it i feel like i'm and this may be like a a thing that my dad kind of taught me like if you're never sure don't they might swindle you right like i don't mm-hmm. want to be taken advantage of so because i couldn't wrap my head around how any of that worked I'm like oh they want all this money and i'm like i don't know any of this like how it all seemed disjointed it's like oh you're gonna just send me an email and i have to figure things out mm-hmm. like you're not gonna take me on a tour and like introduce yourself i was like i felt it was such a scam at that point mm-hmm. that it just i'm like no i'm not gonna do it yeah. but that's like kind of to your point like that's like stuff that we don't know you mm-hmm. know yeah. parents, so you don't have somebody don't to give know. you that like mm-hmm. guidance to be like i got you this mm-hmm. is how you do it you know <laughs> yeah. yeah so that that is overwhelming because even sometimes like with me i always have like a, i guess i'm really uh proud of like how i work and stuff like that but sometimes mm-hmm. i do get weird when it's like i've been the only jose where i work like for eight years mm-hmm. so sometimes that is a little bit weird you know it's like mm-hmm. oh like sometimes i feel like a little bit like like i don't belong there sometimes mm-hmm. you know what i mean so I was like, oh, yeah. like, it's just a little bit weird you know it's like nice to have like i don't know it's always nice to kind of have like your people around where you can mm-hmm. understand like your i guess your culture i guess what it comes down to right because most mm-hmm. like latino people like you could be from different countries where overall you have like humor you know yeah what well I mean? that's what like, i mean like there's a uh, personality food, traits that can be similar like mm-hmm. yeah you're gonna be like taken care of like good friendships and stuff like that yeah and like you feel at least you can kind of feel safe like even you know the mm-hmm. customs of it right like yeah like if you come over to my house and i offer you food like you know i'm just gonna basically force it's gonna it down be a hot throat. sandwich yeah like, <laughs> it's gonna be a nice sandwich okay uh you know if, if you sleep over you're gonna have a blanket right not like mm-hmm. some other friends from different cultures and then but they're like oh yeah you can sleep over they don't provide you any pillows you don't have blankets you're just like left out to dry that would be yeah. good i mean that's what you do though with like mm-hmm. helping people with school then right like- yeah so our we are the second step so the first step is for them to to apply but even before applying like they have to do the application they have to pay they need to make sure that their residency is like up to like it's correct because some of them um either forget to put like their id number or they don't have an id number but they still qualify for in-state tuition like Mm -hmm. sometimes that information is like it falls through and they don't know okay. right and so when by the time they get to orientation um some of them are already frustrated actually jk that's the third step because then they have to do a placement either they have taken the act or they have taken the college placement to let them know what english and math they're in mm. so there's a lot of steps before they get to us um that they get frustrated when when they're with us it's maybe, a very frustrating process mm-hmm. maybe we need to make a program to teach the parents 
how and they, they can yeah. help. And they have tried like an orientation. We try to have oh, really? supporters. We call them supporters because not all of them are parents or guardians. Yeah. So we call them supporters. Um, so so there there used to be a section where like we invite the parents separate, but that's like a 30, 30 minute presentation is just them talking kind of like how could you support your college student mm. but i mean to me by then they need to know that before like yeah. before yeah that, applying. that's before too late you're in the even process. Mm-hmm. yeah like they should know that while you're school because mm-hmm. i think for like a lot of latino people just like uh, or at least when they're like fresh to america i guess like their idea of school is like you just show up and you're just going to go to school and you're just going to end up being a doctor. Like, you just, like, mm-hmm. literally go to school, they drop you off, yeah. and that's all they have to do. They don't have to do anything else. Like, mm-hmm. you're just, like, going to school and everything else just, like, takes care of itself, you know, just by you getting dropped off at school. Like, there's no... They don't help with homework, you know? Like, uh-huh. that's not the education they grew up with, mm-hmm. especially with the language barrier or whatever. But, dude, the, like, I maybe it's better now. It might very well be. I just mm-hmm. remember in high school, they were like, oh, there's this class you have to go to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's like an orientation of sorts, like where this mm-hmm. expert college person or university mm-hmm. admissions comes mm-hmm. in. They, I just remember them handing me like a 40-page packet. It talked about all the schools, in, like the colleges and universities in mm-hmm. Utah. And then it had possible information of like out of state. I'm like, this makes no, this is way too much for me. Mm-hmm. And that was like a 45 minute class. You expect me to understand all this? Mm-hmm. So how would you sell college to a student? That's like, maybe have you ever thought about that? Like I've thought about it, like how I would sell it would it be like, okay, like, well, you can go study for your, your journals or whatever. But I'm like, also like these next four years are going to go by super fast. Like, mm-hmm. and I'd use it as a time to like, you're going to be 18 you're going to be able to do all the things that you wanted to do when you were in high school that you couldn't you're going to be able to do them in college and you're going to be able to like do them with your friends and to like meet people Mm -hmm. and to network and have fun but now you can kind of be i guess be your own own yourself a little bit Mm -hmm. more because you're not tied down to like your parents you know so you can get like a really good experience i guess in in life a little bit more uh, and actually have a chance to enjoy school Mm-hmm. opposed to just like showing up because your yeah. parents wanted you to like mm-hmm. you can go there make friends like uh you know go to a football game do all that stuff that's like i don't know i would sell it more like that you guys never thought about like how would you like tell somebody like hey no maybe i'm too uh i mean i'll let you speak since you're the expert really in that <laughs> but i i i know there's positives for like the, the education i am for it I just do not like the structure of it. I hate being told I have to take certain classes. That drives mm-hmm. me insane. Like, so I, I get stuck on that. So I don't think further than that. Um, and I also think that I I applaud anyone whoever is able to do it while they hold a job because it's not very feasible to just go like unless you're on some sort of full ride scholarship. Like you have to be mm-hmm. able to pay for your transportation. You have to pay for food for housing if you're not in a circumstance where all that comes to you. Like it's just. I'm not saying it's out of reach. It's crazy though. Like, mm. I saw that even when I would look at the like, I, I went to the application. I saw the amount of hours that were required in those classes, and like, I wouldn't sign up to college and skip this. Like, I know people that do that. I'm like, that's ridiculous. You're yeah. spending money to not go. That's mm-hmm. stupid. I saw three hours, whatever. I'm like, I wouldn't even be able to work to afford to be able to do this. Mm. And so it just, I'm, I'm just, I just threw my hands up and never went. Mm-hmm. but anyways it's i guess i'm seeing so the fun guess, of it but you're yeah. seeing like the hey i see the reality yeah. of like the logistics the you know yeah, yeah like i want to be able to like i don't want to just work and go to and i know that's a sacrifice some people i'm not willing to make that sacrifice i want to be able to have like a life where i look back on my 20s or whatever and be like oh yeah i enjoyed that that was whatever because i know a lot of people that didn't have like a and they're like trying to live it out now in their 30s that is true too you know what i mean point. which is fine I just I didn't mm-hmm. want to go through that, and yeah. I realized that when I was younger. I'm like I, I don't want to like slave my my time away because time was like as a kid. I always I even would stay up late because mm-hmm. I didn't want to sleep because I felt sleep was a waste of time. Hmm. I would look like why would my why do I need to sleep eight hours? I'll sleep maybe five, and I would average about five, maybe four hours of sleep, mm-hmm. just so I could do more. I could read more, play maybe video games, watch a TV show. Uh, draw whatever like i always viewed the concept of time like i knew i couldn't make up time Mm. i knew i couldn't make it up so like i'll sleep as little as possible that it get by because time is so important to me yeah no i would 
sell it similar to kind of what you were saying like fun um and i usually tell students it doesn't hurt to try because then you'll find out whether you like it or not and i think there's different ways that you can go about higher ed like there's programs where you only have to do two years if you don't want to do your general studies you don't want to get your bachelor's or master's because that's uh, too long for your timeline then do a two-year or one year there's certificates that you can do um and if again if do like you what you mentioned like do something for you and i know a lot of students come in thinking it's for their parents because their parents sacrifice so much and i'm like and that's amazing but at the end of the day you're the one that's doing all the work yeah so do something that is for you um and then it's a plus it, and look at it as an investment right so i know you're probably sacrificing a lot of time spending with parents and you probably are not making a lot of money because i that's how i felt like i felt like i couldn't provide my parents like a hundred dollars um each paycheck i couldn't i couldn't do that in college course, yeah. um and i'm like look at it in the long run you'll be making more money a lot better for your parents later on so um that's how i have told students like do something for you because you're doing the work at the end of the day give it a try if it doesn't work out at least you know that's not what you liked yeah mm -hmm. yeah i guess that's like the key just like maybe in your early 20s you know either like try a bunch of maybe jobs if you're not gonna go to college yeah mm -hmm. and try things uh new things you know develop just like, skills yeah mm -hmm. yep yeah. and then if you're gonna go to school yeah try things uh i mean in high school that's where i always took like random classes because like okay i yeah. could things i always like realized when i was in school it's like i'm not going to be able to afford a screen printing machine of course out of high mm -hmm. school i'm not going to be able to afford like sculpting when i'm not in high school so i think maybe sometimes like i guess that's another thing that i would tell is like you have so many resources to school that like when you're a grown-up you're not going to be able to afford to even rent mm -hmm. you know like you're here's it's part of your course like yeah like you just try to learn all these like things you know but i think that's more at the beginning because like time goes by so fast mm -hmm. it does yeah well see i think we might we might be done over here oh no we're still good yeah. um but yeah i think i think that's the hardest especially like the not younger students but i think after the pandemic a lot of students like that was not on their list like they they needed to work to provide for family because yeah. a lot of family members lost their jobs and so now they had to take on that responsibility That's crazy mm -hmm. and i think too I, I would imagine there's a massive part of the population whether they outwardly admit it or not imagine being robbed of your years mm. Those, yeah, kids like people that mm -hmm. those kids were people that didn't get to graduate i got to have mm -hmm. that experience right like yeah. uh, mm -hmm. what not even just the graduation just the being able to have like I, I think like the year yeah. after high school where depending on what you do like that was like mm -hmm. freeing for me because i hated the school structure system so much mm -hmm. that I, I absolutely like the summer of 2008 the year after i graduated the, when i graduated mm -hmm. funnest summer because i just made sure i just enjoyed it fully i still had a job full-time job but mm -hmm. they were robbed of that they had to be locked up inside mm -hmm. um worried about money right depending mm -hmm. if they're if their parents or whoever they lived with mm -hmm. lost their jobs they had to interact with their friends over uh website mm -hmm. like that that would suck so bad mm -hmm. the zoom so calls bad. and stuff like that yeah come on zoom calls yeah <laughs> go zoom <laughs> so anyway, yeah either way I, I felt like they got robbed yeah. so it would i mean hopefully they're they're turning it around but mm -hmm. Like yeah. that's like a big part of their life that they just nope that's that got taken away from them uh, mm -hmm. i'm i'm hopeful that um even though with, with all of that that now like jobs are now allowing some people to work remotely yeah. and that's nice this core is now i think a bigger thing and and um at least for us like we're actually created this core for our students and we get usually our students that like to game or like to do podcasts which is awesome so i think it's I, I think it did rob them yeah. but i think it also opened up for the older generation to be like okay let's look at different things so because they now they were obligated to yeah no of course it, it did provide a lot of cool things for sure but i just think that there's like i don't know like a rite of passage almost right like you're done with school mm -hmm. now you get to kind of <clears throat> venture out there mm -hmm. have a little bit of fun figure some things out for yourself yeah. because that's like a year that where you lose a lot of high school most people lose a lot of uh, a lot of high school friends i've actually kept my same high school friends uh throughout all these years i've seen them recently uh for a birthday but like you know they didn't go through that process it feels weird maybe they kept them maybe that was a good thing so who knows 
What's the favorite part of uh, coming to the Utah? <laughs> yeah, that's our favorite oh, yeah. part. Okay, <laughs> losing friend. Mm. Uh, no, but that was—I mean—that was a good. Yeah. I guess that was like fun way that I kind of turned into like <laughs> school, you know? Yeah. For some reason, it's like pretty. I, I think maybe that's the most overwhelming thing I would say too. Like us coming to a different country, maybe or at least mm. coming to America. Okay, um, I guess uh, to wrap things up. Or if you're still thinking, go ahead. Still no, think. No, no. Okay. Um, if you all lived in an area um, that was your own, what type of things would you, um, maybe what type of policy would you implement in your town? Man, you want to go host? I think you've thought about this a little bit more. Yeah. These are like <laughs> okay. weird conversations. I. Oh, okay. He says that because I'm like, and all of my other friend groups know that too. Like if there's a discussion of how you would structure something, mm -hmm what's a oh, policy so, like a town or like an island or something mm -hmm. like yeah. a law or just like a cultural thing like a law like you're you're living in this area mm -hmm. and you want everybody to follow what you want because you want to feel comfortable in it okay i i believe a lot in like meritocracy so you know if you put in a certain amount of effort i should see i would like to see some sort of reward or result for it mm -hmm. so let's say that the city town this is obviously a make-believe scenario i want it to be a, a larger enough population where that population can sustain itself right we mm -hmm. have our own infrastructure of like agriculture engineering things we don't need a ton of them just enough to hold the city together and keep it running on that same token um i do believe in welfare right mm -hmm. like i believe in welfare programs i was a, a product of welfare as, as a kid um but for voting aspects because i'm also big on like that aspect of the republic right being able to vote for things mm -hmm. the more you contribute to the city like as far as like services and things like that the more you get to vote like more votes for you mm -hmm. so let's say someone is uh i i do think people on where welfare should vote i don't think their vote should be taken away mm -hmm. you get one though right but mm -hmm. let's say you go to the after school program and you volunteer to help kids out like big like the what is it called little sis big brother big sister those mm -hmm. things something to that effect okay that's an extra point of vote for you so now you have two votes mm. uh okay now you soup kitchen you you do that two times a month you know you spend time with those that need it that's an extra vote so now you got three votes oh now you clean up the streets you know with litter and stuff like that like these small programs that would allow more votes mm -hmm. because i think that would help encourage people when you start doing things that actually benefit others and not just yourself you're more inclined to live like that and so everyone kind of uh collectively does something like that so that you've been to japan mm -hmm. japan was very clean yes this mm -hmm. is actually their, they, they don't have those type of incentives that's just their culture yeah i think that doing that first though having some sort of program that incentivizes them somehow in that way uh, would encourage people to actually do more and i would actually include tax breaks with that too mm. and people like oh tax more tax the rich no because if you're allowing people to feel more empowered to do more and you provide them some sort of discount on taxes too within that township or city mm. i think you would see like a really good city with very low crime rates uh people generally happier it's cleaner mm. business would thrive because a lot of people aren't doing a lot of ridiculous things to ruin it so that's I guess you asked for one law. My law would be, I guess, incentivizing service programs and uh, community engagement for more votes. That's, I guess, that's how I'll summarize it. Cool. Hey, uh, yeah. It's like John F. Kennedy right there, huh? That was a social credit score in China. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I know, and I, I'm actually very anti social credit score as far as reducing it. Right? Like mm. you, all, everyone gets one vote. Mine is only to increase it. That's the program. I'm not. A believer in restricting other things it's just you get better points like it's waving a carrot in front of them instead of like hitting them with a stick hmm. that's my that would be my thing i've only ever thought about this like in a way of like a minority place you know mm -hmm. like i would make like my dream team would be like a bunch of people that know how to do construction right like find all these people that know how to build stuff from other jobs that are just like not why is there not like more just like mexican or whatever latino people that are just doing all the stuff building things you know mm -hmm. like a lot of them are working there but i don't see like people actually like that they have their own company of building a whole house mm -hmm. so i would just like find all those groups of people that know how to build a house and then i would find more of like maybe brown people that are can invest money right so maybe they have like 
higher credit or whatever or they used to have like more like cash allowance and they can just like finance like the property the land so i've thought about it more that way like mm -hmm. i would get more of like a minority place and i have like people that i could trust but they would all have to have a job right because we'd have to have like the people that take care of like the finances the people that are like building mm -hmm. the you know the town that can build the houses and then what we would do is just like all the families like they could either keep their same job when in the town that we're in but we would have to have like mm -hmm. eventually like a doctor and stuff that moves in they could all keep their job but we would all have to basically all our funds would kind of start uh paying everything that we financed mm -hmm. right so let's say we start paying this whatever debt first of like the land and then the debt of like the uh so all of our wages go towards that until we paid off mm -hmm. basically does that make sense like all the properties yeah, that we finance the houses like all the permits that would be a lot of that mm -hmm. no but that's just how we build it i guess oh, okay. that's just what i'm trying to say like so that's how it would work like all of that would do that but i i haven't thought about like loss i just i just thought about like uh how to get the people in and what's like the, sure. the mm -hmm. on like hey we're all gonna build this we're all gonna own it you know how to do it we're going to basically if you guys can build these houses you guys are gonna get a free house because we're all going to all our wages that we mm -hmm. are gonna yeah. pay our own debts mm -hmm. off and then we come self-sufficient basically mm -hmm. but maybe see the um the law that i think maybe i would have the hardest i don't know if i could answer what law that i would make my own law, but maybe the law that i would have the hardest time uh making is who is allowed into the community once it's set mm. who's allowed i don't know that's probably like my hardest one because eventually it's going to start growing people get married mm -hmm. so it's like how do you keep it like at a place where it's not like too big you know or it's just like where you keep it like at a mm -hmm. I guess where you can kind of still kind of control it or whatever, where everybody still has like the same goal. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you do that? You know? So maybe, I mean, your credit I mean, score idea is it's good, but then it's just like, ah, you know? No, I know you like, mean. It's like, you know, sometimes then other people are not going to have the belief of like, why would I mm -hmm. invest all my money in this little that, That's what people mm -hmm. like uh, don't understand. Like, oh, they're, oh, this country has this. Usually they only use policies from countries that are vastly smaller than the U.S. The U.S. I think is the fifth or sixth largest country as far as population goes in the world mm -hmm. like every other country that has a bigger population the u.s just has has just as many issues with everything including government like when they're like oh this works here yeah that's mm -hmm. a homogenized group um that they mostly all fit very similar skin color very low diversity um with vastly smaller population like the population of a small state in the u.s of course they're going to have easier time with it because they have a smaller population to be in charge of i'm not going to get into the, the whole thing but that's <laughs> you, i agree with you like the control of the size like at some point you have to draw the line like yeah okay this is the border you know so to speak whatever the border is once they're like you're outside of my jurisdiction you're on whoever's property or whatever that's for them to decide i, I would say yes maybe my law would be like you would have to use your somebody has to have like a skill an ex like an expertise of some sort of skill and that would be what they have to basically donate for free at all times mm -hmm. pro bono yeah mm -hmm. at all times well yeah i mean because if we're building something like we're going to rely on the builders right yeah or if they're teaching us to build they have to teach us right so how much other time would they have to sacrifice for that i mean that would just be part of our day if we're building a house and this is like in the town where you like building a house oh, okay you know because eventually when we're self-sustaining interesting yeah i see then they're like okay what's going to be their job they teach other people how to build Okay. a house right or they yeah. teach other people how to farm or other people how to be a doctor but that doctor has to do it for free because that's all yeah I see that's I mean. part of why he gets to live in there it's sure yeah that makes sense cool yeah. mm -hmm. okay what about you cool. i was just thinking of free taco tuesday i'm just like you didn't yeah. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. I want people to go the solar you know. panels i was dude, i didn't even go into that i even almost talked about how i would address crime because one of the one of the crimes i hate the most is theft yeah mm. and that's because i you know coming from a, a poor background and knowing people like that would have come to me like oh this this was stolen i know how much that uh 
what's it called the inconveniences them oh i thought you meant not even just how much the lady at the 7-eleven hated you yeah no she hated me a lot okay um but like theft is so petty and i think it can be ignored and that law that i said in terms of incentivize i think that would reduce crime so much that people would feel less inclined to steal because there's a, a sense of shame mm-hmm. because the community is so proud of themselves you know what i mean but anyways i took that way seriously clearly but <laughs> I, talk about the 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 beer, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't live at your place okay <laughs> i want to have freedom to choose what i want to eat on tuesdays okay i said free taco tuesday you don't have okay, to. Okay, okay, freedom okay. tuesday yeah. <laughs> freedom <laughs> year man okay? that's every year <laughs> yeah that's yeah. funny well thank you we, both for engaging you're, yeah. you're starting next time on these questions yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes I, I think this is a really good topic actually yeah, no. so i think that's what we might do next time yeah, i like ah, it. that was pretty fun. nice yeah, so yeah. maybe think oh, about time. think about your law your architecture oh. <laughs> your what to expand more on yeah to expand uh, more more on. Gonna i'm gonna come with a, a proposal no. my developed plants you know yeah. everything is gonna be i'm gonna have a so fleshed out process, okay? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> lasers or pointers you know yeah okay a big powerpoint somewhere yeah. you can do a powerpoint we'll do it you know yeah I'll, I'll, we have little whiteboards <laughs> yeah <laughs> also make sure you all come up with the name of your town okay or city. yeah bet cool yeah. <laughs> it's uh, not the name of the is town. that are you being for real or i can't tell if you're being for real maybe you're getting good at lying like us <laughs> oh i'm not being for real <laughs> she's being for real yeah. being for real. <laughs> she doesn't joke like us yeah i'll bring it i'll bring a, a official you? proposal of how it will look okay and how it will be structured oh wow. that sounds pretty fun to me okay yeah yeah, I guess I'll be taking some time off real work. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you're going to be providing the to service my for free, free okay? Yeah. <laughs> Just like you, you're going to have to pro bono, okay? Yeah. Free. Okay. No oh. freaky. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Anything y'all want to add before? No. T- today was really more like kind of your, what y'all liked about Utah and living here and um, kind of your journey here as well. Yeah. Anything y'all want to add? I know we went more on like education too towards the end. So, yeah. anything on education y'all want to include? No, I thought we had a pretty good... It ended up being weird about maybe being insecure about education, you know what I mean? Yeah. I would like, uh, or challenged, I guess, is the word. Yeah. But, I mean, it talked about our childhood, and I mean, mm-hmm. I would imagine most everyone's childhood memories, most of them stem from school. Yeah. So, I mean, it transitioned pretty easily into that, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was kind of weird for me to talk like i'm not i i've said this multiple times it's very difficult for me to talk about anything like very personal which is mm-hmm. one reason it's kind of nice to do this because i like if i know you personally i'm able to share small bits and pieces over the course of a few years right not all instantly i'm not one of those people that overshares so that was uh it was nice interesting topic favorite thing about utah favorite thing about utah I would have to say probably the, like the landscape like it's so diverse mm-hmm. with like what utah has like it if you haven't been out like to the wilderness utah has crazy nice wilderness mm. yeah i think you mentioned it yeah. earlier yeah i don't think you mentioned about, your yeah. your favorite me mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if i god i'm not that good at the wilderness because uh i would probably say i'm not sure if the word is a conservative but it's a conservative or like uh familial values yeah that it's got a lot of like like traditional values i guess okay. right yeah or maybe that it was like a newer state when we moved into it right sure mm-hmm. so like there wasn't like everybody e- even though we were all minorities where i lived like from different parts of the planet everybody had the same value so it was just like you know everybody was just like you didn't even have to uh, i don't know everything felt so easy because mm-hmm. everybody you know whether it was like some person in africa or some you know some pakistan bosnia like everybody had the same like traditions you know family like doing this being nice to guests and stuff like that and yeah you know being welcoming and stuff like that so i think that it's like a traditional place i guess where it wasn't like too i mean eventually i guess no place ends up being like that because back to our point of the town you know everybody starts to get different ideas and stuff like that but sure. i would say that was probably my favorite thing about about utah everything was still like a i never felt like unsafe i guess with mm. any of my friends yeah i think for me it was like the at least where i have lived not like always calm but calm enough for yeah. me to uh, calm like um not a lot of traffic not a lot of people unless you really go out to like concerts in utah even yeah. then i don't think that it's you you don't get a lot of people so i think that's what i like 
most about and i guess a lot of family i know there's still some people that are rude but other than that they're pretty good pretty yeah. calm yeah here. agreed and the mountains too uh, yeah it's it's weird going out and not seeing mountains that is mm-hmm. true we're spoiled with mountains you're supposed mm-hmm. to be camping before the year ends house yeah we still can go it's going to be cold we're now probably though. not going to go but I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay and then last question and then we'll wrap up um something you don't like about utah Ooh, um this might be a cop out i do not like the population increase at all mm. at all it ruins the uh map back to your point 15 years ago it was a very different utah um mm. than it is now crime rates are steadily rising i'm not a fan of that mm. um and actually kennecott mines hideous it actually ruins the mountain range in my opinion mm. it's like depending on like if you're looking east towards our mountain range beautiful mountain range if you look west you see this like discolored gross uh mine basically and so it ruins like i i wish i could have seen that mountain before they started the mines i bet it was fantastic Mm -hmm. so that's the other thing i hate is the kennecott mines it ruins the skyline i would probably Mm -hmm. just say like the corporations that moved here you know especially like the housing development ones like Mm -hmm. That they just like buy a bunch of like land and stuff like that price and they yeah price everybody out and just like making these like town homes where they can get like mm-hmm. the most bang for their buck and everything's like a tiny thing a tiny like yard and it's like where they like i don't know they now it's like so many like property investment places that just come here and just clean out because they got just like so much funding to just like clean out like all the land that other like smaller normal normal in utah like other smaller like i remember when i where i grew up in west valley like the companies that would buy like plots of land would barely buy like an acre to be you know be able like and it would take them a while to build a house yeah to build them a house it's now it's like oh we're gonna build like a eight, massive, you know 800 yeah. townhouses mm-hmm. and we're condos or whatever and we're gonna take up all this space so i don't know i would probably say that i don't like that like all the stuff that's moved in here uh from i guess all the outside jobs you know that brings up a lot of people too like all those yeah. big companies and stuff like that that end up like mm-hmm. oh, taking all the cool perks i guess about being a small state yeah mm-hmm. yeah i would agree too like in the area where we or i guess the gentrification but yeah. also the the animals because when we um in the area that i live there's like in the back area there's like a a creek in the uh, what do you call it like where you can walk a sidewalk a, a not pathway. a small pathway, pathway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and so now a they trail. build trail. trail thank you yeah. they build townhomes and now but before then that's where we would see deers like yeah. run out and i'm like where where did all those animals yep. go yeah and so i think that's part i, I don't like seeing and like i can't my childhood of me riding my bike there or um having like there was like deep they're probably very dangerous to go through but there were just holes that you could ride your bike uh, and just go like that like had your own skate park but maybe not safe um yeah. so I, I think those those things i miss that and um an old town midvale like it used to be full of um vendors of who were um people from from there that lived yeah, there I and remember. now it's like actual like franchises and businesses. yeah uh, and pop it, goal <laughs> yeah yeah so i'm like oh that's kind of and then i'm assuming prices are going up people are probably getting kicked out of their homes because of the prices oh, so yeah. it's um it's not the same i think it's uh, not the agreed same. Mm-hmm. it feels more corporate to your point yeah. mm-hmm. than it does like a, a smaller town or at least a mm-hmm. I mean, Utah is officially now a medium-sized state, I think, based mm-hmm. on population. It used to be small, but they literally just upgraded it because of how mm-hmm. many people have been moving to Utah. I guess we mm-hmm. go from towns to cities. That's what we're saying, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where, like, yeah, it was, like, West Valley City, but now it's, like, an actual yeah. city. Salt Lake City mm-hmm. was the only city. Yeah. And now we're mm-hmm. seeing smaller cities, cities actually start, becoming cities. Yeah, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Uh, yeah. yeah. Shout out to uh, wherever else we're going to move now, you know? Thanks, consumerism. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm part of the problem, so yeah that's it now that's that's all i have cool that's all anything else yeah no, no, good. Good. Uh, okay. any other surprise questions no 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 no, no. we're, we're well, good okay. remember next time come prepared with your talent i will have a proper yeah, yeah, that, well, yeah, you. you're gonna build one too right 
No, no, I'm the host, remember? Oh. I decide what. For your what free goes Taco on. Tuesday? No, I need to see the math behind this, okay? <laughs> How are you going to supplement all these people? You know, I'm kidding. Wow. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Host, we'll see you okay. once. It'll be a um, host, host. We didn't uh, make it a competition, but now, okay, I'm locked no. in. No. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All then right. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you both for oh, answering no, the question. No, it was fun. I had a lot of fun. Me too. Okay. Okay. Awesome. See you all next time.